Good morning. Welcome to our morning prayer service from the Book of Alternative Services. My name is Jonathan Blanchard. I'm the pastor here at St. Thomas Anglican Church, located at 1400 Edward Street South in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And so we welcome you wherever you're watching from, and we pray that you are staying safe and healthy. We have a few shout-outs uh, for anniversaries and birthdays. Uh, Shout-out to Pat and Wayne LaCherity, who are celebrating an anniversary on the 16th of this month. And to Paul and Sandra Erickson, who will also be celebrating an anniversary on the 18th of this month. Uh, birthdays are being celebrated by Neil Spencer on the 17th and Ken Koza on the 20th. So a big congratulations to each of you. We're so glad that you're part of our parish and we pray you'll have a wonderful day of celebration. Before we begin, a, a thank you to those who have been uh, putting money towards the fundraiser for the shingles on the roof. My wife and I definitely appreciate that. It's uh, just uh, marvelous to see the generosity coming forth from this parish. And so we thank you from the bottom of our heart. We just are, are so uh, delighted that you uh, just reach out in so many ways. And we just feel so loved and appreciated. So thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your ongoing gifts that, that you give both of money and of your talents. Well, let us uh, now open our service with a hymn. for those that have your Book of Common Prayer at home. You may follow along. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. And if you wish, you may join with me and with Deanna as we say the Venite on page 49. Come, come let, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And then the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today, for Corpus Christi Sunday, is Psalm 63, and it's found on page 783 in the Book of Alternative Services. We'll read the first eight verses, so verses 1 through 8. I will say the first and odd verses, and then Deanna and others of you at home that can respond with the second and even verses of the psalm. And then we will conclude with the psalm prayer on the following page. O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal love, our, our hearts, hearts are restless, restless until they rest, rest in you. Let your glory shine on us, that our lives may proclaim your goodness. Our work give you honor, and our voices praise you forever. For, For the, the sake, sake of, of Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus, chapter 12, verses 21 through 27. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go, select lambs for your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in blood that is in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians, when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. You shall observe this as a rite, as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, 
for he has passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. The people bowed down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now have a gradual hymn. St. Luke, beginning at chapter 2, 22, verse 7. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, it is the second Sunday after Pentecost, but it is also remembered as Corpus Christi, or literally, the body of Christ. And so there are two things for us to be reminded of when we talk about the body of Christ. First, it is literal. It is absolutely real. Jesus is the Christ, and it is his body that is sacrificed for us. And so it is something that is very powerful to us. Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could be forgiven and that we wouldn't be under the judgment of God. It is the true Passover, where in that first Passover, Moses had people slaughter lambs, 
but Jesus also figuratively is the Lamb of God and so he is the perfect sacrifice he is the one that can forgive all sin for all time and that is why this Passover meal is so special because Jesus reappropriates that first Passover and says I am the true Passover meal when you partake of bread remember the sacrifice of my body for you when you drink the wine remember that I shed blood for your sins it wasn't just a cute little sheep that did this it was the person of God in human flesh and so that is a very powerful thing to remember when we talk about Corpus Christi it's not just a theory it's a person it's the person of God who was Jesus on the cross and so that's why it is such a beautiful but a very powerful reminder to us that we as followers of Jesus have been passed over our sins have been passed over and we are not under judgment because of Jesus body but we are also a metaphor the body of Christ is also a metaphor it is something that represents all of us who are followers of Jesus if you remember the passages that Paul talks about the followers of Jesus are part of the body of Christ and we are uh, many parts but part of one body and so in that sense it is figurative and metaphoric but it is a beautiful nonetheless because it shows that we all are participating in the salvation that Jesus has promised and so it is a marvelous thing that we can be part of the ministry of Jesus we can be the hands and feet of Jesus because we are part of his body the metaphor body and so when we go out into our communities we are part of that body we represent Jesus and whatever we do or say we are to make sure that it honors Jesus and blesses others and so as the body of Christ we can't say that one is less important than the other we are all significant in the eyes of Jesus we all have a role to play we all have a ministry there is not one person who is following Jesus that can be considered less important every one of us has an important role to play Jesus has called us to a very special ministry each of us will be doing something unique in our lifetime and it is up to us to be able to bless others with our unique abilities and our love and the different ways that we can participate in our community and so I just offer that to you on this day of Corpus Christi that you remember yes the body of Christ is real it's Jesus who died on the cross for us but the body of Christ is also a beautiful metaphor we are part of that body we have a role to play we have an individual part in it and so remember those two things whenever you go your ways this day be reminded that Jesus is the true body of Christ but we also participate in the body of Christ we are members of it so whoever you are wherever you may be remember that if you are a follower of Jesus you are part of his body let us pray Lord Jesus we thank you for a simple but very deep and profound idea of what the body of Christ is we thank you that you are the true body of Christ that you are the Christ whose body was on the cross but we thank you that we can participate in the body of Christ as the metaphor and so help us to live these truths in our lives not just today but every day of our life this we pray in Jesus precious name
Amen. Now let us continue with the Apostles' Creed, which you will find on page 52 of, a, of your book of Alternative Services. You may say this with me wherever you are. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we will now have our litany. We will say the morning litany, which is number nine, found on page 117, 117. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit. Lord, have mercy. In our worldwide Anglican communion, I invite you to pray for the province of Myanmar, or Burma, and the Most Reverend Stephen Thun Mient, Archbishop. In the Diocese of Algoma, please pray for all the women of the ACW, in the Diocese of Terime, please pray for Julius Muir in Kemayari. Also, please pray for continued good health and well-being for all parish members and families. We pray that perhaps in September we may worship together. In our parish of St. Thomas, please remember and pray for myself and for my wife, Deanna, as we spend time preparing services and try to be available to all who are shut in. Please continue to uphold in prayer our youth and especially our confirmation candidates. Please pray for Sinclair, Caden, Janelle, Danis, Michaela, and Jacob. I ask you to continue to pray for our city of Thunder Bay and for all those who are beginning to venture out to malls or parks to places of work. Ask that the Lord will keep them safe and healthy. Please pray for all victims of terrorism and continue to pray for missionaries near and far and ask God to bless the work that they do. Please uphold in prayer UCB, the 
United Christian Broadcasters, who will give us wonderful songs of praise during these long days of being shut in. Please continue to pray for all city workers, that they may be kept safe as they try to clean and beautify the city. Also continue to pray for those who are affected by floods, fires, earthquakes, hurricanes, and other forces of nature, also the virus, pandemic. Please especially pray for those who've been impacted by recent tornadoes and terrible thunderstorms in southern Ontario, whose properties have been damaged. We also remember the churches that, uh, the church buildings that have uh, been destroyed by fire. Please pray for those congregations where they now have no place of worship. And I ask you to continue to pray for our prayer partners, the members of St. Andrew's ACW in Camrose. Now let's turn our attention to our parish family and friends as we pray healing mercies for Val, Amanda, Marie M, Barb H, Brian C, Bob Y, Brian S, Don S, Sandra J, Andrew and Austin J, Joyce K, Laurelyn M, Rachel L, Nathan S, Brian J S, Aubrey J, Tammy D, Linda T, Leslie K, Matt M, Nick E, and Yvonne Z. Take a moment to remember those who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone and pray that they may have a place in his eternal kingdom. Please remember all families who struggle with bereavement at this time. And I invite you to remember those you love but no longer see. Grant all these requests, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, <clears throat> our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The Collect for Corpus Christi Sunday is also the Collect for Monday Thursday. Pray. It's uh, found on page 304 if you wish to join with me wherever you are. O oh God, your Son Jesus Christ has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. We will now have a closing hymn.
before we conclude this service with a blessing and dismissal, a reminder for any who have the link to join us for virtual coffee hour, a Zoom chat after uh, the service, if you watch it this morning. It's at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and so if you watch it in the afternoon, you won't be able to join us for that Zoom chat. It's 11.30 to 12.30 p.m., and so you are welcome if you have that link to join Deanna and I for a, a marvelous uh, time of just fellowship and some good laughs. And so now, uh, before we conclude, let us have a dismissal and let you go about the rest of your day. Let us go forth into the world joyfully continuing the work of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Thank you for joining us for this morning prayer service, and we pray you will watch again next Sunday. God bless.